Welcome back, fellow coder, to this next Fresh Votes episode where we're going to be continuing our task of building a real-world Java web app from scratch using Spring Boot. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be diving into the use of Spring Security, a uh, very, very handy uh, framework uh, built by the uh, gentlemen and uh, ladies at Spring. And uh, it's used to, uh, well, secure web apps. Some people might misconstrue the word secure to mean, uh, you know, make it unhackable type of thing. Uh, but you know, uh, although there is some aspect to that that uh, Spring Security brings to uh, you or us as coders, um, it more so, it has a very practical usage other than that of being, uh, putting up essentially a login uh, page. So before you can access anything inside of the application, you need to log in first. So in our cases for our Fresh Votes app, as a sort of business or a um, that sort of use case of using this application, you want to be able to uh, have a separate profile uh, and separate abilities in terms of posting things and allowing people to upvote and downvote the things that you post, right? So that's, you need to log in to get access to your account, right? That's a very, you've seen this over and over again, right? So that's what Spring Security allows us to do as well as uh, it gives us the, you know, hack or hacking proof uh, things that we can add to our application. So that, so it works in, the, the term security works in those, in both of those ways. So login page as well as, uh, you know, helping to be unhackable, right? I don't believe there is such a thing that is completely unhackable because hackers are always finding ways to hack in, but it definitely helps. So in, um, by it, I mean Spring Security helps. So in uh, Fresh Votes here in our POM file, I have commented out the Spring, uh, Spring Boot Starter Security artifact, uh, dependency. Uh, now I want to re, I want to uncomment? I want to uncomment. Which, uh, what, a quick way to do that is you select all the lines you want to comment slash uncomment, uncomment, and you use control shift C. That's the shortcut. So you can comment, uncomment, do, 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 do. control shift C, control shift C. You get the idea. Okay, so we'll save that. We'll bring Spring Boot Starter Security, just Spring Security, uh, back in. And uh, let's see, failed to, well, I don't know why I would have said that, but let me, because we should have a data source. Yes, and another thing in our log here, we get warnings saying establishing SSL connection without um, verification. Blah, blah, blah. This is probably because I, I would assume uh, we need to say question mark use SSL equals false because right now we're just doing this locally in our database um, on our local machine. So it's not we shouldn't tell it to try to use SSL. So if we reboot uh, with that uh, use SSL equals false in place, those warnings should go away. Uh, yeah, so they went away, and now all we have is a deprecated driver class. Um, the new driver class is blah. Okay, so how about we do that? Let's try to use that new driver class, uh, which is right here. Um, paste that in. Let's listen to the warnings and follow suit and reboot that server now. Okay, so now there's no warnings. We're using a new driver class. How exciting. How thrilling. So I want to check in to make sure I'm on the master branch, which we are, and we have our unstaged changes. Very good. Okay. So what's going on here? So in our last episode, we were able to go to localhost 8080 and see Welcome to Fresh Votes. And if I refresh this page now that I've uncommented the spring security, uh, you'll see that it redirects us to a login page. Okay, that's the default for spring security um, because right now when you enable spring security by default, it essentially secures all endpoints. It assumes that any part of the web app should be secured uh, and you should not be allowed to, to view it unless you sign in first. That's a bit aggressive, right? So we want to lax those, uh, you know, we want to, um, what's, what's the more common use instead of the word lax? We want to make it less um, crazy, less, less secure, if you will. No, that's not a good term. Um, anyway, we want to relax. There we go. I guess that's where the word lax comes from. We want to re relax the, um, how much it secures. So how do we do that? Well, we do that via, the old way would be using XML configuration files. The new way is to use Java config, right? Java configuration is literally using a Java class file uh, as a configuration uh, class, uh, configuration annotated class, and then we do our configuration inside of Java class files. 
So let's do that. Let's create a, I typically what I do is I create a, a new package called uh, dot security. Okay, and I, and I take all my Spring Security stuff and I put it into this package. So the first thing I want to create in this package is, well, let me stop my server so it doesn't keep on rebooting, uh, is uh, a class file called, and you can call this whatever you like, but I typically call it uh, web security config or something like that, or configuration if you want to be more, um, if you just like to type a lot. So uh, again, you can call this class whatever you like, that's what I'll call it. Uh, but more importantly, you need to annotate it with um, uh, configuration. Okay, so this is a configuration file. So what this tells Spring now is it tells Spring that, Spring that this is a, a Java config file. So it should be treated like an XML file, only it's a Java version of an XML file. Okay, for this file specifically, we want to make this a Spring security configuration file so that we can tell it this is the file that we're using to configure our Spring security setup. Uh, and we can do that by extending, uh, I can never remember the name of it, web security configure adapter, I think. So let's go ahead and do this. Sometimes I choose the one that's deprecated. Okay, no, it didn't cross it out. So that must be the correct one. So web security configure adapter, okay? And then what we do is uh, I hit control uh, spacebar to find there's two configure methods. Okay, one is for um, authentication and the other one is for authorization. Uh, do I have time to, uh, let, me, let me briefly touch on those. Uh, authentication is who are you and prove it. So you've seen this before many times on the internet. Who are you, prove it. Uh, username, password is the more uh, generic way that you know these two questions. Who are you, username, prove it password, right? So username, password, that's what essentially what this is all about, this configure method with the authentication manager builder. Who are you and prove it? So for this uh, method that I've now clicked on uh, or double clicked on to choose to override, uh, the whole purpose of this is to tell uh, Spring Security where the usernames and passwords are stored. For now, what I'm gonna do just to keep things simple, um, and I wouldn't recommend you do this in production or in your, uh, your uh, regular application. We're gonna use in-memory authentication. So what this means is we're gonna build a database of users and passwords just in memory. So this gets tossed away when we, when we uh, stop our server and it gets recreated every time we start our server. Uh, obviously this is not meant for production use cases. But for now, for this, just to illustrate the use of Spring Security, we will do this. So we're gonna do with user, username. So the username will be Trevor at crafty coder .com. Uh, And then password will be, uh, I don't know. What do I, what do I usually do? I think I do ASDF, ASDF. Okay, that's typically what I do. Uh, and I think that's it. That's for now, oops. For now, we keep it super simple there. Um, that we've now created a user. Oh, and I need to specify a role, roles. Um, We'll say it's a user role. So roles have to do with something else. Roles have to do with uh, authorization. So we've just done authentication. Now let's talk about authorization. So authorization you can make use of inside of the other configure, um, whatchamacallit, uh, method. You, authorization is essentially, once you said who you are and you proved who you are who you say you are, username, password, then great. What access should I give you? So are you like an administrator? Should you get a whole bunch of access to this application that you're logging into? Are you just a regular user of the application? Are you, you know, those are the two most common things, admin or user in terms of roles. Um, you can pick whatever role you want. You can create a role of, again, dog poop, if you really wanted to, and you could secure certain parts of your, your app using the dog poop role. Maybe the dog poop role can only get access to a specific link that goes and shows you a picture of dog poop or something. I don't know, this is just a, you know, it's the point I'm trying to illustrate here is it's completely up to you. You can do whatever you like with this. You can create as many or as few roles as you want in your application. You can have just one role, okay? I think you need to have at least one role. Uh, you can you have at least one up to an infinite amount of roles probably, right? Although that wouldn't be a good use case of roles. You wouldn't want to have an infinite amount of roles. Uh, but typically the, the most common ones are 
a user role and a, an admin role. So with this uh, configure method, for now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disable something called CSRF. We'll cover that in another uh, lesson. Okay, but for now, let's just disable that. And I won't talk about it. We'll talk about that later. Um, you need to authorize requests. Actually, that's not true. Yeah, is that true? No, not yet. Hold on. Uh, I can never remember what we do here. I, you do this just uh, infrequently enough to, to always forget um, how, to, how to properly configure these things. I think, do I do ant matchers here? I think you do ant matcher first, which is a terrible name, by the way. But anyway, ant matcher, and then you assign um, the... I think you say permit. No, apparently not. Ant matchers? No. Okay, so maybe we do, uh, and I apologize for my, again, this is where I should have done more research beforehand. Um, maybe you do do authorize requests first. And then can I say ant matcher? Yeah, there we go, ant matchers. And then uh, permit, there we go. Okay, so authorize requests first. So what we're saying is, okay, let's talk about uh, authorization. Right. What um, we again, we talked about authentication. That's who are you and prove it. Authorization is what access do you now have one that you've proven that you are who you say you are. So this is where we're telling it what to permit. And in terms of permit. So when I say permit all here, what I'm saying is let everyone in. They don't need to to authenticate themselves. This is open season. Anyone can see this. Right. So if I just say forward slash, what I'm saying is permit anyone to see just the home page, but just the root uh, URL. Anyone can see that without having to log in. Okay. You can also say ant matchers, uh, you know, slash, uh, I don't know. Uh, if you want to be more specific, you could even say slash index dot permit all. Okay. Permit all. That way you're saying only the index file um, is allowed to be seen. Right. Um, and I might even do that. I might be more specific and say index, okay? And then what you can say is uh, any other request. So any other request other than the one above it um, needs to have a role associated with them, okay? And the role associated with them is user. So any other request, you need to be authenticated. You need to be authenticated and you need to have an authorization of the user role, okay? So that's what we're doing here. And, uh, and there's more that we need to do. Um, we also need to specify um, and uh, the login page has some settings and stuff. Uh, like the login page itself should be slash login. The, what else we, the uh, login page, we should permit, permit all people to see the login page because you don't want to, have to force them to log in to see the login page because that's an infinite loop. Um, is there any other options that I usually, I mean, a default success URL is usually helpful. Um, we'll, we'll get into that in another lesson probably once we get further in our journey of creating this. Um, login page permit, I guess that's good for now. Yeah, that's good for now. And then uh, we also typically do a logout, um, I don't know, logout URL. I mean, this is, we're kind of, uh, we're kind of getting into the weeds here, but you don't, you don't really need to have a logout. This is kind of, these are the default settings anyway, but I'm just showing you that you can mess around with the, the, uh, login and logout stuff. Uh, what else? And I think that's it. I think that's all we need to do here. How are we doing with time? Okay. I have like about a minute left before I go over time. So let's reboot our server with this stuff that we've now specified. Uh, and let's, let me see if I can demonstrate that this works. So hopefully if I did this properly, we should be able to go to the root URL. Cause remember we have allowed it. Although this might not work cause I'm doing root URL instead of slash index. I'm realizing this probably won't work. So if I go to the root URL, it's still going to ask me to log in. Okay. That didn't work. Uh, and the other thing that didn't work is I don't have a login page. Okay. So then we're, we've done a, a couple things incorrectly. So. This is the correct way to do it is we're giving access to the root URL. Okay. That's what I should have done. Uh, because the reason why I should have done that is because I'm not typing in slash index, right? I'm not typing that in to go to the root URL. I'm typing in just nothing, just slash, right? 
So that's what I should have said permit all on. So now if I go to slash, um, it allows me to see fresh votes. It allows me to see that page now because we have specifically said permit anyone to get access to the root. Um, but if I try to go to uh, you know slash dashboard, although this doesn't exist yet, if I try to go there, it's going to say, hey, you're not permitted to see that. You need to log in first. So you'll see the slash dashboard when I hit enter is going to turn into slash login, right? So it went to slash login, but now there's no um, there's no page here. There's no login page because we're we're not leveraging um, the existing uh, login page. So perhaps if I were to get rid of form login, it might that might work. If I comment this out. Uh, and I realize I've, I've gone over my 15 minute max that I promised, but uh, we're, we're really close now. So let's try login again. Uh, access is denied. Okay, it's not letting me go to. So maybe I need to say ant matchers uh, login permit all. And reboot that server. And see the login page. No, 404 not found. So once I, I specify some stuff here, it gets rid of the default, um, the default uh, nice pretty page that we saw. So uh, I guess in the next video, we'll see how we can leverage that pretty page. And if we can't leverage that pretty page that we saw before for login, um, then we can create our own because it's not hard to create our own login page. So we'll tackle that in the next episode. Thank you so much for joining for this one. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Fresh Votes series video. <laughs> As always, take care of yourself. Happy learning and bye for now.